Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to do a nice little wrap up of chapter 13 where we're looking at net slash HTTP package. There are a lot of things in just net alone, other um, protocols that are built on the net package itself, but that too is pretty nice and straightforward. And then a lot more you can do with net HTTP itself, like we did not do post or get, but those are things that I encourage you to try out. There's this website called um, jasonplaceholder.org, I believe it is. Anyway, I'll put the link right there. And you can go there and make a RESTful request and get sample data. And you can use that sample data now to augment um, a template, for example, So which we've already been doing. We've been using data we get from a file. We've been using data that we generate within the application, but you can do a GET request. And so that allows you to play with that sort of thing. So that's just one tip. What I want to do in this um, video to wrap up, though, is show you um, a very simple CSS library that allows you to you know, like lay out pages and stuff. And this is not really about Go at all. So, but I figured so instead of leaving you high and dry, I should give you some tips. Now, um, this is a relatively new library to me anyway. I used to use Bootstrap and Foundation and then some other frameworks that are not just CSS frameworks. Um, this mini CSS, I think, is pretty simple and straightforward, so I won't figure out, let me just show you what we can do. So let's take our example for an instance. And we're gonna, of course, um, copy what we had before, modify it, and run it and see what the pages look like. So let's now go um, install this library, see what it takes to put it in place. It's a very simple library to use. And so we can go to the website, um, go to the web, search for mini CSS, is copy this link. Now there are a number of ways you can install it, but um, this is, we're gonna use the simplest way, which is using a external link. And we'll just put it in place. Like I say, it installs just like how we're using our CSS file. As you can see there, you can compare the diff too. But I'm gonna put in all three of our .html files. And then I'll build and rerun our application. And when you look, you'll see it all, something change. You can see the screen move there just now, something change. Well, that's not all. <laughs> um, there's more to this. And I, again, I said I'm not gonna spend time trying to teach you HTML or this library because that's outside the scope of this course of Go programming. Some people are gonna be upset just me spending this much time on it. But I figured let me wrap up the chapter this way. Anyway, so I'm going to create a container um, div and within it I'm going to create a row div, blah, blah, blah. And that's going to be for my head heading. And you can see when I build and rerun re this and I refresh, I have my heading nicely centered and I could resize, um, resize my page and it would still have a fluid, nice fluid layout. Now, while I talk, I'm going to do some more updates just to show you that with a simple library like this, now again, I'm not pushing this particular library, I'm just saying this is one of the simplest I've seen. Uh, Bootstrap is very much the same in terms of the, the same CSS classes, but a few more files to include. So take your pick. Um, and there's also foundation. Um, you're gonna see quickly that I'm gonna be able to modify our very simple application to look a lot better without a whole lot of um, styling of myself. I'm just going to use this library. And if you go through the documentation for the library, you're going to see they have many things. They have headers and grids for laying out on a whole bunch of other things, forms and so on. So um, again, this is just a summary chapter, wrap up chapter 13 on HTTP. Good luck if you're trying to write a web application. I think you have the foundation to get going. If you want to do something more complicated than just some pages, I think you should lose a web application framework. Um, for me, my choice has been Angular, but there are a number of them out there. Vue.js is getting popular. Um, there are a number of people using React. So if you don't have a web application framework yet, pick one of those, go with it. In the next video, we're going to start a chapter on testing, and that's going to be the last chapter in this series, and then we'll just move on and start doing other things, right? Have a great day. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for spending your time with me. I really appreciate that. Thumbs up the video. Um, subscribe if you haven't, and definitely appreciate you spreading the word. Um, check out, um, follow me on Twitter at Straversity1. Instagram is at Straversity, S-T-R-I-V-R-S-I-T-Y. Take care. Bye.